Some of you might have heard astronomers and public science educators argue against astrology by claiming that the signs of the zodiac are in the wrong places. Over the past 2,000 years, a wobble in the Earth's spin called precession has shifted all the stars in the sky by about 30 degrees, which is one sign. Consequently, the argument goes, the signs no longer align with the respect of constellations. For example, your horoscope says your sign is Sagittarius, but because that sign is currently aligned with the constellation Scorpius, you should call yourself a Scorpio, or should it be a Scorpius? The problem is that we are talking about two different systems for two different purposes, and they should not be confused or conflated. The zodiac signs that astrologers have used for observations for at least 20 centuries are simply 30 degree divisions of celestial longitude. The constellations that astronomers use to locate objects in the sky is an arbitrary map. The names, shapes, and positions of the constellations can be altered by convention, which has been done many times. The constellations are not as consistent and reliable as the signs. Although astrologers sometimes do use individual stars, they do not use constellations in their everyday practice. The argument that the signs have moved is only possible by presuming that the constellations carry the meaning of the zodiac and that the signs have no meaning. This presumption is false and can be demonstrated by a thought experiment. Suppose you are an astrologer in an advanced society in ancient Mesopotamia and you know that the sun's passage over the solstices and equinoxes cause the seasons of the year. Suppose you have an, a monumental observatory and you know exactly where the solstices and equinoxes are physically located on the local horizon. You know that the solstices mark the turning points of the sun's positions during a year. You call these points the tropics after the root word meaning to turn. The two equinoxes occur at the midpoint of travel between the solstices. You take these four positions projected onto the sky as your cardinal points and draw a frame of reference dividing the sky into quadrants. The solstices define the vertical axis and the equinoxes define the horizontal axis. Your problem is whether you can make inferences for the moon and the planets by using this framework as you have done for the sun. Because you want to include celestial bodies other than the sun, you do not label the cardinal points to represent seasons. Instead, you label them to represent the values, values of the underlying tropical structure, the hierarchy of the solstices, and the equality of the equinoxes. Thus, for the vertical axis, you choose the goat, Capricorn, and the crab, Cancer, to represent the extremes of the hierarchy. The former climbs to the tops of mountains, and the latter dives to the bottom of the sea. For the horizontal axis, you choose the scales, Libra, and the ram, Aries. The former finds balance in cooperative dealings, and the latter competes against equal rivals to determine a winner. This thought experiment demonstrates how the cardinal signs of the tropical zodiac were developed from physical clues in the environment. We can find no such physical clues anywhere in the constellations that would suggest any sort of hierarchy and equality that are clearly represented in the tropical zodiac. Thus we must conclude from the evidence that constellation names are borrowed from the tropical zodiac. This borrowing occurred at a particular time in history, but without diligence for the different purposes of observing and locating. Furthermore, we must also conclude that the sidereal zodiacs used in India and elsewhere that are based on constellations, prominent stars, or small groups of stars, but incorporate the cardinal signs, are in fact derived from the tropical zodiac. The evidence pointing to the physical and historical primacy of the tropical zodiac is clear. The astronomers who argue that the zodiac has shifted with the constellations are misinformed. They are clearly unaware of where the constellations came from. The divergence of sidereal zodiacs from the tropical zodiac is an eternal problem for astrologers to decide. Astronomers who have no knowledge of astrology are not in a position to offer opinions and make claims. 
The same goes for the raging debate over the age of Aquarius and the successive ages of the 26,000 year Great Year Cycle. The constellations play only a hypothetical role in astrology and have no impact on its day-to-day -day practice. The additional argument by some astronomers in favor of 13 signs because part of the constellation Ophiuchus is on the path of the zodiac is wrong for the reasons already stated. If the astronomers think differently, then let them learn astrology and refute it with good reasons. There are 12 signs for the same reason that there are 12 hours on a clock instead of 13. Systems based on four cardinal points with 12 equal divisions and 60 or 360 increments have been used throughout history to organize empirical information, especially information related to cycles and harmonic patterns. The tropical zodiac is firmly based on a reliable physical framework as is entirely consistent with other widely used empirical frames of reference.